Psycho-Cybernetics, written by Maxwell Maltz, Chapter 2, Discovering the Success Mechanism Within You. Psycho-Cybernetics, a new concept of how your brain works. When we conceive of the human brain and nervous system as a form of servo mechanism operating in accordance with cybernetic principles, we gain a new insight into the why and wherefore of human behavior. We choose to call this new concept Psycho-Cybernetics, principles of, psycho of cybernetics as applied to the human brain. I must repeat, psychocybernetics does not say that man is a machine. Rather, it says that man has a machine, which he uses. Let us examine some of the similarities between mechanical servo mechanisms and the human brain. Two general types of servo mechanisms. Servo mechanisms are divided into two general types, one where the target, goal, or answer is known, and the objective is to reach it or accomplish it, and two, where the target or answer is not known and the objective is to discover or locate it. The human brain and nervous system operates in both ways. An example of this first type is the self-guided torpedo, or the interceptor missile. The target or goal is known, an enemy ship or plane. The objective is to reach it. Such machines must know that the target they are shooting for. They must have some sort of propulsion system, which propels them forward in the general direction of the target. They must be equipped with sense organs, radar, sonar, receptors, etc., which bring information from the target. These sense organs keep the machine informed when it is on the correct course, positive feedback, and when it commits an error and gets off course, negative feedback. The machine does not react or respond to positive feedback, it is doing the correct thing already just keeps on doing what it is doing. There must be a corrective device, however, when, however, which will respond to negative feedback. When negative feedback informs the mechanism that it is off, off the beam too far to the right, the corrective mechanism automatically causes the rudder to move so that it will steer the machine back to the left. If it overcorrects and heads too far to the left, this mistake is made known through negative feedback, and the corrective device moves the rudder so that it will steer the machine back to the right. The torpedo accomplishes its goal by going forward, making errors, and continually correcting them by a series of zigzags that literally gropes its way to the goal. Dr. Norbert Wiener, who pioneered in the development of goal-seeking mechanisms in World War II, believes that very similar to the foregoing happens in the human nervous system whenever you perform any purposeful activity. Even in such a simple goal-seeking situation as pick, picking up a package of cigarettes from a table, we are able to accomplish the goal of picking up the cigarettes because of an automatic mechanism, and not by will and forebrain thinking alone. All that the forebrain does is to select the goal, trigger it into action by desire, and feed information to the automatic mechanism so that your hand continually corrects its course. In the first place, said Dr. Wiener, only an anatomist would know all the muscles involved in picking up the cigarettes. And if you knew, you would not consciously say to yourself, I must contract my shoulder muscles to elevate my arm. Now that now I must contract my triceps to extend my arm, etc. You just go ahead and pick up the cigarettes, and you are not conscious of issuing any orders to individual muscles, nor of computing just how such a contraction is needed. When you select this goal and trigger it into action, an automatic mechanism takes over. First of all, you have picked up the cigarettes or performed similar movements before. Your automatic mechanism has learned something of the correct response needed. Next, your automatic mechanism uses feedback data furnished to the brain by your eyes, which tell it the degree to which the cigarettes are not picked up. This feedback data enables the automatic, me automatic mechanism to continually correct the motion of your hand until it is steered to the cigarettes. In a baby, just learning how to use the muscles, the correction of the hand in reaching for a rattle is very obvious. The baby has little stored information to draw upon. Its hand zigzags back and forth and gropes obviously as it reaches. It is characteristic of all it is characteristic of all learning, just that as learning takes place, correction becomes more and more refined. We see this in a person just learning to drive the car, who overcorrects and zigzags back and forth across the street. Once, however, a correct or successful response has been accomplished, 
It is remembered for future use. The automatic mechanism then duplicates a successful response on future trials. It has learned how to respond successfully. It remembers its successes and forgets its failures, and repeats the successful action without any further conscious thought or effort. 